Welcome to Suffolk Water Park for episode five of Spotlight. Let's go. Right, I'm going to make a, a change to the rigs that I threw out this morning. I've just actually brought one back in and tested it in the margin and I've just found out that this particular material on this bottom here absolutely sticks out like a sore thumb. So with that in mind, I'm going to make a change. can't help but feel that maybe I've missed an opportunity with maybe trying to, you know, getting a fish on a suitable rig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a fluorocarbon leader you have to use a um, rig tubing or a leader on this lake so I'm just going to strain it out quickly make sure that's nice and straight like that which it is and then on the end of that I'm going to put a little hinge stiff rig I'm fishing an area out there just to the side of some weed, but if that does catch some of the low lying weed out there, um, it's, it's just going to kick out from the lead. And that little chod rig on the end of there, a size five chod hook, so it's a nice little tiny little one. That should pretty much be presentable on anything out there. And if it does get picked up by some of the smaller fish that I know in this lake, it will automatically reset itself. A rig that I'm far more confident in using, particularly on a lake like this and the bottom that I've got out there. So that's why I'm making the change and I think I've probably just done it in the nick of time, just as it's getting a little bit cooler now and the fish may start to uh, have a little bit of a feed up as it's uh, cooling down, as it's uh, pretty much mid-twenties today. They're cruising about on the top, but they're not really interested in feeding at the moment. But that can all change as the night draws in and it gets a little bit cooler. So I'm gonna get all these three rods done now. I'm just gonna feel a lot more happier knowing that these are out there than what I had out there earlier. After about four or five hours of putting bait on that little snaggy area in the margin, I've noticed a few fish feeding on there. So I'm now going to put a bait on it just to see if I can have anything through the night just as the sun starts to go down. Well, time for a little update on how the days panned out. Um, we turned up this morning, it was a little bit touch and go whether we was actually gonna be able to fish. 
um, due to the, the carp spawning on this lake uh, at the weekend. Luckily, they, they've, they've done what they needed to do. They've got that out of the way, and yeah, we managed to get on here. We've done a slow sort of like setup this morning, just sorting ourselves out. So it's been 28 degrees. The carp are just cruising around on the top. They're not really interested in feeding. But we've got two days here. Um, as the time goes on, the amount of energy that the carp are using, cruising around, they're, they're very, very active. So they've got to feed at some point. Um, they started taking a few mixes on the top earlier this afternoon. So um, yeah, it's, it's looking promising that we, we can, you know, we can possibly get a few out. Um, looks like we may be able to wangle a few out on the top as well. But yeah, that's pretty much the update for now. And yeah going to get the head down in a minute. The rod's all set for the night. Um, we're on a swim called the Flagpole Swim and it's meant to be a, a, a summery hotspot out uh, in the middle of the lake there. So let's see how it goes tonight and I'm going to get up first thing in the morning to see if I can get uh, a few feeding off the top as that sun starts rising which is a really good time for surface fishing because at the moment I think that's probably our best bet of uh, getting a bite or two purely down to the weather. Well, that was really, really interesting. I've just literally had a one toner on this rod. And then when I got to it, there was absolutely nothing on the end other than a big twig. I threw it back out. I threw a handful of boilies over the top. And as I was playing about with the bobbin, I just reached down and the bobbin just whacked the top of the rod. And there was a fish on the end. I, can't, I still can't get my head around what's actually just happened, but I've got a fish in the retainer. I'm happy as Larry. So let's go and see what she weighs and take some pictures of her. Well, she goes 28 pound, one out. Here it is on the other side. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Absolute stunner. Let's hope they still keep coming like this because I can deal with catching these all day long. Well, really happy with that. What a lovely, lovely fish. And all I need you to do is go and tell the rest of your family to come and pay me a visit. Beautiful. Absolute cracking fish. And off she goes. Yes. Well happy, well happy. Well, we're bang in the middle of the day pretty much now and it's 25 degrees heat. We've got fish just sitting out in front of me. They're not doing anything. They're 
basking, lapping up this summer heat. So I thought I'd give you a quick update just to say, yeah, it's quiet. Um, it's going to change later on, obviously, when it cools down, but it's a good opportunity for me to show you these little Neutrino M1 alarms, which are really, really cool. They're so small and they come with a receiver, but once you actually tune the um, alarms into what you want with the, um, your, your volume, your tone control and all of that, you can turn your receiver off and I'm actually just using this little sounder box here as a receiver, uh, which is really, really good. It screws into my bivy table. Um, these are a silent alarm, so it only comes through the receivers. They're also compatible with all the um, other smart band technology, your bivy lights, um, your head torches, and, and all that sort of stuff. As normal, what you get with all of these sort of thing with with, N, with uh, New Direction Tackle. But yeah, that was it. Just wanted to show these little alarms. They're really, really cool. I think they'd be very, very popular, uh, and they're great for you guys that want to be mobile. So that's it. I'm going to keep you updated what goes on, but at the moment, I didn't get much sleep last night. Um, we had that lovely, lovely fish early hours in the morning, and I've just gone through the photos, and it's something quite special. I'm feeling a bit tired now, so I'm going to have a few hours sleep just before it starts cooling down for the afternoon, and I can get prepped up for the, uh, for the night. <laughs> random thing has just happened I've just cast my rig literally under that tree I felt it bounce off of something and it just ripped off I have actually fell hooked a monstrous eel in the tail and you can just about see that but it's just caught on the tip of its tail but that as eels go is quite a big eel so now I've got the pleasures of trying to handle that with it wriggling out my hands like a bar of soap. As things go, that's actually quite a decent eel. And it's great to see these in our lakes because they are on the, I do believe, or were on the endangered species list. And this is just proof that they are migrating again back up our canals. And by the size of that one, it looks like they're doing quite well. So I'm going to put it back in the lake. Can't claim it. Can't claim it. Cheers, big ears. Well, we're into a final night um, at the mighty Suffolk Water Park. It's been a little bit quiet today, again hot, they've just been mooching around, not really doing a lot. I'm starting to get a little bit of activity now on my, my left hand margin rod, which is the rod that I had that fish in the early hours of this morning. So it's potentially looking quite good for another you know, night, early morning bite. The weather's going to change tomorrow though, so this is a big thing. It's going to be, um, there's going to be a lot of rain coming in. The temperature's going to drop, the pressures are going to alter, which could just trigger that feeding um, frenzy or, you know, just even a, you know, a few fish to start feeding rather than just mooching around. So yeah, still very, very optimistic that uh, I can get another fish or two or three. But yeah, that's it at the moment, but I will definitely keep you updated with progress. Well, that's it. Session cut short. They started spawning literally three days before we turned up. The lake was shut, they reopened again. I woke up about five o'clock this morning, see a couple of fish, a little bit suspect. Um, looked like they were spawning, wasn't 100% sure. Sure enough, an hour later, they are having it large now. So 
We're going to do the only thing right and bring these rods in. Like I say, let's cut this session short, but we're going to go home and we're going to see if we can pop onto another lake that's already spawned to see if we can uh, make the most of the session and the time that I've allowed to be on the bank. Well, that journey back took a little bit longer than expected and time's pushed right on again. Um, there's never enough hours in the day. But I've dropped Mr Fuller off. I'm about 10 minutes from my house and I've decided to just literally drop into here for an hour. I know it's uh, quite good for doing a bit of stalking at this venue and I also know they spawned. So hopefully I'll be able to wangle one out. That's, that's the plan anyway. Sneaky, sneaky. It's all about keeping quiet. I'll let the brake rod right down. Ouch. I can't get it through connected up. Get stuck, stunk, brambles, everything in it. Slowly, and you can see them there. Go on, get it for a spot. Get it for a spot. Go on, go up, up in the few. Well, up there. I think I just need to try and see if I can hold that there. There we go. We're in. Feels like a nice fish this. The problem I've got is that uh, I've got a bit of weed in front of me. I have to go through this. I don't want it going around that corner. I'm gonna go through this shitty stuff. Come on, back out. I'm not sure if it's on or not. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's a fool. Would you believe it? There we go. Right place, right time. Literally half hour. Found some fish in the corner. This time of year is great for stalking. Three lined bait straight on his nose. And what a result? The fish that I've had before it is a known fish. I'm not going to weigh it. It's hot. I'm going to get straight back in the water. But he's 100% a 30 pounder, lovely fish, good girl. That's it. Nice one, well done. Well, that's well. it, all packed up. I'm sweaty, I'm down to my last set of clothes because I've got a habit of jumping in the lake. And we've done what we needed to do. We've had that fish out at Suffolk Water Park started spawning we've moved off let them do what they needed to do we've dropped into another lake where they've already spawned and we've managed to stalk one out uh, out of the margins which is absolutely great and probably my favorite way of catching carp so again that's it another end to uh, another episode of spotlight continue to watch these episodes and i hope you're enjoying them and episode six isn't going to be that far around the corner